So Simon, what happened in the warm-up match that you've just had? Both you and Marcus North missed day three. Basically, uh, I copped a knock on the thumb uh, early in the first innings uh, on day one, and it basically got more and more swollen as the day went on. So at tea time, I decided uh, I'd had enough batting practice. I think four hours was enough, and uh, decided to get in the rooms and ice it up so it didn't swell up too much. Um, and then Marcus, uh, after he got his 100, uh, during his innings, he unfortunately um, stirred up his back um, when he stopped coming back for a second run. So basically, uh, yeah, he got a little bit tight in his lower back, and so that was sort of precautionary for him to stay off the field and not uh, do any more damage to it uh, when we went out to field. And how are you both feeling now? Will you be okay for the first test? Yeah, I'm pretty sure both of us will be fine for the first test. Um, we both had training today and got through that and we've got another training session tomorrow afternoon before the test starts on Friday so I'm pretty sure both of us will be fine. And how about the team preparations? How are they going and how are you got a couple of new guys over there? How are they fitting in? Yeah look there's a lot of young faces floating around the squad now. Uh, it definitely makes for a different feel. Uh, there's a lot of young guys that uh, haven't played a lot of uh, cricket even domestically so it's good to see them getting opportunities to tour with Australian squads and they're fitting in nicely. Um, they're all training hard and doing what's expected of them. Uh, and then I guess our preparations have been excellent. Uh, we got here, had some good days of training, even though it was wet, uh, we had good sessions and then the three-day practice match was brilliant. Um, it was a pretty good opposition we were up against. A few of their guys were in their test squads, so we got to see a little bit of them, guys like Shri Santh and Oja and a few of their batsmen. So. Our guys, uh, most of the batsmen spent time in the middle, which is what we wanted, and then the bowlers had a good hit out, uh, knocking them over for about 180 in the first innings. So uh, four days probably would have been ideal uh, to give the bowlers another good hit out in the second innings, but uh, as it turned out, we had really good preparation, and now we just have to uh, make sure that we're mentally ready for the game starting on Friday. And what about levels of security? I mean, there's a lot of talk back here about the Commonwealth Games in New Delhi at the moment. How are you guys feeling? Do you feel safe over there? Yeah, we feel completely safe. We've A lot of us that have been here before know, know what to expect. Uh, there's huge security presence, uh, not only here at the hotel, but also on our floor of the hotel, um, outside the hotel, in the streets leading into the hotel, um, basically, wherever we go, there's huge police presence and huge security presence. So uh, it does feel nice and reassuring. They're all heavily armed. Um, so if something was to happen, uh, hopefully there won't be anything happens. But if something was to happen, then I feel that, uh, well, I certainly personally feel safe. And uh, we've got some questions here from Facebook. Who is your favourite Indian bowler and why? And what are some of your best moments playing India previously? I'd have to say my favourite bowler uh, in terms of a, a really good challenge is Harbhajan Singh. Uh, he's obviously someone who gets a lot of crowd support here in India. Uh, the Indian uh, supporters always love seeing their spinners on with guys around the bat. Uh, and he's a very skillful bowler, so he's always a hard work as a batsman. I guess my favourite moment playing here in India uh, was back in 2004 uh, when we won the series in Nagpur. Uh, it was the first time I think an Australian team, test team, had won in India in about 35 years. So there have been lots of very good Australian teams come here but be unsuccessful. So to be a part of that was was certainly a highlight for me. And is, is there a favourite place that you like to tour and, and where does India rank in terms of that? Yeah, look, I think uh, in terms of playing cricket in the world, uh, obviously to play at home in front of big crowds in Australia is always very special as an Australian player. but. For me personally, uh, I think India is probably second behind playing in Australia just because the people are so passionate about their cricket. So uh, for me, I, I get to see a lot of joy on their faces, I guess, when they when we come to play over here. They love seeing Australian teams come here because we obviously have a great rivalry with them now and that's been going on for quite a long time. So uh, playing here is a huge challenge as a cricketer and I think you certainly find out where you're at as a player, uh, particularly of spin bowling when you play in India. So... I'd say uh, it's probably second behind uh, playing in Australia for me. And we've had a lot of questions about your cricketing growing up. People want to know what cricket team you played for as a kid, when you first made a state team, and when you first uh, played for Australia. I basically grew up in Perth. Uh, 
and uh, I played my junior cricket at a club called Middle Swan Cricket Club uh, from when I was about nine years old. Uh, I think I started in like the under tens, and then just sort of worked my way up through the age groups. And then my local um, sort of district club was Midland Guildford, where I played under thirteens, under fifteens, and under seventeens. And that's when I first got picked uh, in a WA uh, development team. I think it was like a an under fifteens or under seventeens development squad. Uh, Mike Hussey was in one of the uh, opposition district teams, so we grew up playing uh, all our underage cricket against each other until we started to play for WA together, um, which is something a lot of people probably don't know. And then I got to play for Australia, I think, first time was in 2001 uh, in Test cricket, and I made my debut in one-day cricket, I think, in the 2000-2001 season against Zimbabwe at the MCG. And do you have any words of wisdom for aspiring cricketers? I think for me, uh, it's always just about really enjoying the contest and, and getting to play with teammates. I guess uh, growing up, it was always about having fun. Uh, it wasn't so much about uh, doing something. Uh, it was about doing something that I loved. And I think cricket's always been uh, a big part of my life because I've loved doing it. Uh, my mum and dad said that I wanted to play it from a really young age on the front lawn. So... Uh, for me, it's just been a, a passion. So I think if it's cricket, if it's another sport, whatever it is, uh, I think you should just yeah do what you're passionate about and, and do what you enjoy. And do you enjoy being an opener or do you see yourself moving down the order in, in the long term? Yeah, it's funny. I, I started my career in, in the test team batting at number six, uh, never really opened much. And then when the opportunity came uh, two years ago, when Matty Hayden got injured at the top of the order, I jumped at the chance. Uh, because I have spent most of my first-class career batting at number three. So I think it's probably where I'm best suited. And I, if I'm moving down the order, it probably means I'm being moved out to greener pastures. So uh, I think I'll probably be at the top of the order for the rest of my days. Um, how long that is for, I'm not sure. We'll just wait and see. Hopefully the runs will keep flowing. And the fans would also like to know if they think, if you think that you're going to get a bowl in the Vodafone Ashes this summer. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, it's a funny question that I'm getting asked that a lot. I think uh, the fans out there probably enjoy me bowling more than I uh, do when I bat, so which is probably a fair call because I probably provide them with a bit more entertainment with the ball in my hand. They get to see a few runs scored by the opposition batsman or the odd wicket falls um, when I've managed to burgle a wicket or two. But yeah, look, hopefully I'll be able to bowl this summer. Uh, I've done a lot of work on my shoulder uh, in the pre-season when we had six weeks off. Uh, did a lot of yoga and Pilates, which I think it's a byproduct of being old. Uh, my training pattern has changed now. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be bowling a few overs during the Ashes, but hopefully not too many because if I'm bowling, it means we're in a bit of trouble. <laughs> and how instinctive is your movement at the crease and has it always been that case? Yeah, it's something I've done right from uh, when I was probably about 18 years old. Uh, growing up in Perth, we played on quick wickets at the Wacker, so... To get in line with the ball, that was sort of why my movement was created and um, it's something that I've felt comfortable with. So I know it looks ungainly at times and people probably think it's a bit strange because a lot of guys get taught to stay still at the crease. But I think from my point of view, as long as my head's still um, I sort of, and as long as I know that I'm moving early enough and it's not too late, um, then I'll hopefully have time to play the ball. So uh, it's just something I've, it's been a habit that I've gotten used to and, and I definitely can't change it now. And finally, what would you be doing if you weren't a cricketer? Uh, thankfully, I've managed to play, make it as a cricketer because I did study at uni and I did a commerce degree um, and I would have had my head buried in accounting books, which probably wouldn't have been that much fun. So uh, I'm glad that cricket has gone well for me. Um, but if not, I, I think I was also passionate about playing AFL football, but I don't think I would have been good enough to, to do it. So I would have found something I was passionate about. So... If it wasn't cricket, um, it might have been another sport or it might have been another field. Um, maybe something like being a physiotherapist or I've always enjoyed sports. I might have been uh, doing something that got me involved in sport. Well, thanks very much for your time today and best of luck in the first test. Thanks very much.